a church celebrates the feast day of St. Galliopi on June the 8th. The following are some details on her life and works. One of the genuine heroines of 3rd century Christianity was a quiet, lovely girl with the pretty name of Galliopi who lived in the reign of the vicious emperor Decius. He was an extremely callous and pompous monarch who took delight in barbarous acts, chief among which was the per- persecution of Christians for whom he had a hatred-born fear of their lord. Had St. Galliopi been born in the 20th century, she may have been a candidate in a beauty contest, but in the 3rd century, her beauty indirectly made her a candidate for sainthood, which she won at the expense of her life. When Calliope reached the tender age of 21, she had already passed the age at which most women of that day were married, but it was not for lack of suitors, which she had in great numbers. Her days were filled with activity, social and religious, and 21 years had come and gone seemingly unnoticed. When at the last she seemed ready for marriage, a host of suitors bellowed her for her hand. Among the would-be husbands was a pagan who would not take no for an answer. He sent word that were she to reject him in favour of another, especially a Christian, he would see to it that pagan authorities call her before them. Calliope did not hesitate to not only deny this suitor, but made it plain that she would not marry him even if he were a Christian. A conversion which would have been highly unlikely as well as useless. The threat to her life was carried out and and though the use of false rumour and and accusation, she was brought to trial before the magistrate. She stood accused of of a variety of crimes against the state, ranging from a mockery of the pagan faith to treason against the state, all of which was attested to by a parade of well-paid false witnesses, none of whom had ever seen the girl. The rejected suitor stepped forth to offer a withdrawal of the charges against her if she would disavow Christ and became um, and became his pagan bride the alternative was torture and if that didn't bend her will then it was death in a manner to be devised if Calliope had any fear or was the least bit hesitant she did not show it but instead she declared that the only mockery in this affair was the trial itself and she furthermore asserted her faith in Jesus Christ that was enough to to seal her fate and she was led off to prison a far cry from the comfort of her home with her loving parents. The deadly game had begun, and the gentle Christian girl had to know the helplessness which leads to terror and which in turn weakens the will, but she gave no indication that she would recant. She was then put to the cruelest of tortures. Taken to a public square, she was bound to a post and mercilessly flogged until her clothing and flesh were in tatters. Her beautiful face was scarred with branding irons and salt poured into her open wounds and while the breath of life was still within her, she was told to disavow Christ. When this gallant girl refused, she was put to death in in 1957. A special synod allowed a liturgical service to be written by John Ramphos honouring Calliope whose feast day is on June the 8th.